It's a date that has left deep wounds not only for Turks but Ottoman Jews who had lived in what was then known as Tripolitsa. In September of 1821, as Greek rebels fought for independence from the Ottoman Empire, they massacred between 10 to 30,000 Turks in the city of Tripolitsa. Countless other minorities were also targeted. Those who escaped the initial killings would go on to face grueling conditions under captivity. Many would die of starvation. After the attacks ceased, the total Turkish and Jewish populations in the region had been exterminated. Tripolitsa was the capital of the Dan Ottoman province of Moria, which is situated in modern-day Greece's southern coast. With this year marking the 200th anniversary of that massacre, Turkey's foreign ministry said that such atrocities can never be forgotten. The tragedy also offers a reminder of the tensions Greece and Turkey are witnessing today. The Greek government's moves to limit the rights of its citizens with Turkish descent and its treatment of migrants remains a point of contention across the Aegean. And to discuss this further, I'm joined from Istanbul by Vehbi Baysan, Associate Professor of History at Ibn Haydun University and in Ankara. Mehmet Ure Kinci, he is an international relations expert at SETA Research Institute. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, uh, Vefi, Turkey has commemorated the uh, 200th anniversary of Tripolitsa massacre. Could you walk us through the history, uh, what had happened and why? Aisha, what happened, of course, um, it, it's, uh, it will be remembered always with bitterness because that's the time of uh, Sultan Mahmud II, where he was trying to push for his uh, reforms, but um, obviously that weakened the uh, uh, central authority, namely the army. And in 1821, uh, there is a siege of Tripolitsa. In fact, lasted a couple of days, and then when Tripolitsa fell, around 8,000 uh, um, men, women, children um, massacred uh, in that town. And of course, uh, we're not even counting how many injured, but uh, the events leading to that massacre uh, total, uh, they say that even over 20,000 people got killed. That is in the name of war of um, independence. Mm -hmm. And I think these uh, should be remembered because I said, Almost uh, even a bit less than 100 years later, we have so-called Balkan Wars. Yeah. But in fact, they were not wars, anything. I mean, the wars happened between two uh, armies. There was no army to defend any civilians. So those civilians did not carry arms, did not constitute any threat uh, to any authority, massacred en masse in thousands. So it repeated itself. So I think commemoration of these kind of events should be a firm reminder to the uh, especially populist politicians that actually how dangerous it is to provoke some nations against uh, each other. So that's why we should look at it, the commemoration in a, in a positive way, but also not to forget that civilians, human yeah. beings, have been massacred and killed. So are you of the view that this brutal vengeance amount to ethnic cleansing? Well, at that time, that's how it was seen. And certainly uh, in nine, uh, 90 years later, what we call, as I said, uh, Balkan Wars were ethnic cleansing. Uh, yes, I, I, can, I can say that. And it's understated, underestimated what had happened there. But awful things happened just because they happened to be Muslims and Turks. Yes. So we're not here to really go again, open the old books and uh, develop policies. But what I'm saying, uh, any side, either side, should remember these massacres, that these are crimes against humanity. So, uh, Mehmet, what was the significance of Tripolitsa? I mean, what was the uh, strategic importance of that region back then? Uh, well, first of all, I'm no historian, but uh, that, was a, uh, that was an attempt for independence for, uh, from the side of the Greeks. Uh, so the Greek rebels uh, want to uh, capture uh, important port towns uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the quickest way possible uh, to uh, get hold of certain strateg strategic uh, locations and then pull European powers uh, into the conflict. Uh, so this also can be seen as an uh, act of provocation uh, to, uh, to get more retaliations from the Ottoman army towards Greek civilians and then uh, escalate the events. So uh, this is how I 
uh, would comment on this as a political uh, observer. Mm -hmm. So maybe not only Turks, but also Jews and Albanians were uh, tortured and then massacred during the siege. Uh, do Jews commemorate this day? Well, I don't know, because um, it is, uh, as I said, should be remembered uh, as a, a crimes against humanity, because uh, even the harem of Hurshid Pasha, his daughters and uh, wife and also sisters, all that, has been taken uh, and, as, as slaves. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible what had happened. So um, the, the Jews uh, also were subjected to, but more important, the Albanians, people of the region even, so indiscriminately uh, killed and massacred. So now, um, as I said, these events uh, already known among historians in detail and a lot of information um, available. But as I said, I mean, because those things are not widely spoken, mm -hmm. 90 years later, we have Balkan Wars and God knows who and what uh, would uh, prepare near future for us. So from that perspective, Turkey gives uh, importance uh, to what had happened then. Okay, so Mehmet, how has the legacy of the Tripolitsa massacre affected Turkey-Greece relations and how they have evolved since then? Uh, speaking of today, uh, in both societies, uh, there, is, there are still imprints of uh, negative historical memory, uh, not only of this uh, particular massacre, but also uh, there were a lot of tragedies and uh, conflicts from the uh, 19th century onwards up until the establishment of the modern Turkish state. And uh, afterwards, the Cyprus issue had its own historical uh, imprint. Uh, so uh, historical memories are still alive uh, today among the societies. So this is the empty part of the uh, glass, but also we should uh, look at the uh, full half of the glass uh, that since the establishment of the modern Turkish Republic, uh, there has been a, a very visible political will among leaders of the countries, uh, starting with uh, Atatürk and Venizelos and uh, developing afterwards. So uh, today there is still uh, uh, a very strong interest in both sides, in political, uh, political leaders, uh, to develop a positive agenda and focus on uh, cooperation in matters like trade and transportation and energy and so forth. So, yes, uh, yes there, is, there is still need for uh, a, an amelioration of the mutual images between Turks and Gre Greeks, but uh, this is not the most decisive element of uh, how these societies see each other today. So, uh, Vepi, what's your take on that? I mean, do we see, still see the after effects of uh, this in Turkey-Greece relations, especially when it comes to minorities and ethnic tensions, like how Greece is still denying the West Thracian Turks their right to education and religion? Well, this is precisely why I, I said this uh, commemorating this uh, event should have positive uh, impact, because uh, in the process of uh, uh, war for independence, a lot of civilians uh, and armed civilians uh, that did not constitute any threat to anybody has been uh, killed in thousands. Mm -hmm. That had negative effect in the communities living in the Ottoman Empire in 19th century. Let's remember the Greeks or the Rum had very privileged uh, position in the Ottoman Empire in early 19th, I mean, always in 18th century and early 19th century. But after these events, that trust has been uh, kind of quite destroyed um, and, and diminished. So um, it is, it should be used as, as a positive example. I mean, it's not positive, but in a way like, say, we should not allow, both communities should not allow this uh, to happen again. So, uh, yes, uh, Mehmet, you have mentioned and talked about the possible areas of cooperation because we know that Turkey and Greece are at odds on various issues, namely the first one, maybe Cyprus, and then Eastern Mediterranean, but what do you make of the uh, situation in West uh, Thrace? Um, according to uh, decisions of European Court of Human Rights and uh, the latest calls from Council of Europe, uh, Greece still needs to uh, implement certain uh, arrangements for the establishment uh, and the operation of uh, minority associations. Uh, we know that there is a sizable uh, community of Turks and other Muslims living in Western Thrace and also some uh, Greek islands. Uh, 
uh, but they don't enjoy uh, minority rights in terms of uh, a national minority. So this is uh, internal uh, how how Greek law is uh, decided. But uh, regardless of how these communities are uh, legally called, uh, they need to. Uh, uh, enjoy rights and freedoms, strong rights and freedoms uh, in the level of uh, Euro, European U Union standards in terms of their uh, associations and uh, also religious activities. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining us on Straight Talk.